So hey guys, I'm here with Jen Broyles and I'm just super excited to kind of sit down and chat with Jen about her personal SIBO journey, personal um, health crisis, and then also um, her journey back into um, coaching people and helping people who deal with um, health issues and whatnot. Um, so yeah. So Jen, um, for anyone who doesn't know you, can you just give us a brief introduction of yourself? Yeah, of course. So thank you for having me, Josh. And yes, like you said, my name is Jen Broyles. I am a board certified holistic health coach. And, you know, just a little bit about my background. I, I actually, my previous career was in pharmaceutical sales and um, I was, I was dealing with my, you know, own health issues during that time. I started experiencing some digestive problems in my twenties, kind of just like managed it best I could, didn't really do anything about it. Um, and it progressively got worse and worse to the point where I did start seeing doctors and of course got diagnosed with IBS, which <laughs> at the time yeah. I thought, yes, they know what's wrong with me and they can heal me, you know? Yeah. And yeah. now we all know that that is such a blanket di diagnosis. It doesn't mean a whole lot. And that's ultimately what started me on this health journey. Um, you know, as I was, you know, I went through a lot of just the conventional tests and seeing a lot of different doctors and, um, trying a lot of different treatments and medications and nothing really solved the problem. And so that's when I really dove into my own reading and research and just kind of like this passion developed within me, especially in the area of nutrition. And that's when I decided to leave my career in pharma and go back to school to study integrative nutrition. And that's, you know, through, through that kind of path and sequence of events is, is what's led me here. Um, I have been working as a health coach for about five years now, which I cannot believe it's gone by really fast. And through all of that and training with functional medicine practitioners and all that, I discovered what SIBO was and that, you know, it's for a lot of people, the underlying cause of IBS. And so it's just kind of led me on this journey to, to now. <laughs> really, really interesting. And really, um, I'm excited to kind of dive into a little more detail just because yeah. I don't know your experience from the pharmaceutical industry to getting into different forms of medicine and that should be very interesting just because um you know two different takes and both have their pros and cons so absolutely um so first of all can you kind of just um i always kind of like to ask people at the beginning of their health journey when they started to come down with these symptoms um at your lowest point, like what did that kind of look like and what motivated you to like say, hey, like there's something wrong going on and it's like really an issue. I need to seek something or get find yeah. out what's going on. So at my lowest point, and I kind of went like had a lot of ups and downs before I actually saw a doctor about it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, when you're feeling physically like not well, and just for me, it was a lot of uh, bloating, constipation, and um, you don't want to go out. You don't yeah. feel good in your clothes, you know, like, yeah. and like I started isolating myself a lot and I am a very social person and, yeah. but I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to go out to eat because every time I ate, I felt sick. Um, I didn't know what was wrong. I tried figuring things out on my own. I found that um, you know, I started exercising a lot cause like running would help, but, um, to the point where it was probably not healthy, you know, yeah. and I lost a ton of weight and, you know, it was just all of that said, like, that's one of the things that made me realize, okay, um, maybe I do need to see a doctor about this. But then at that point I still didn't, things started to get better. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll tell like, I was prescribed at that point, I was prescribed, um, antidepressants okay. and, um, they actually helped like with yeah. my gut because a lot of them do help with serotonin production, which helps with peristalsis. Yeah. So there's a lot of reason behind that, but I started feeling a lot better and, yeah. um, still not perfect, but so that just continued me to prolong, you know, any investigation to the underlying cause. Mm -hmm. And then over time, things started getting bad again. And um, I started experiencing a lot of skin issues. 
And that's what really drove me to go see a doctor because yeah. I was like, this cannot be happening. You know, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> like, this I think is it, not okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's when I really started seeing a bunch of different doctors and trying to figure things out. And I still didn't know what was wrong other than that, oh, you have IBS. And um, at that point is when I started really doing a lot of reading and research into nutrition and the role of food because yeah. I'd never looked at that before. And that's when I started going down this more alternative route. Okay, gotcha. Um, so what? So your primary symptoms were more, more like bloating, skin, constipation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, those were those were the primary things. Definitely anxiety because I mean, who wouldn't have yeah. anxiety around all of this? And I think I tend to be a more anxious person, like worry, fear, you know, anxiety. Like that's kind of been something I've dealt with, but just like not to this capacity. And um, yeah. yeah, so all of those things. Yeah. And then when you finally started to kind of seek out some help, um, tell me about that. Like, where did you go first? Did you go to a, a general, you know, uh, you know, general physician or did you go to a gastroenterologist? Or Yeah. So my first appointment was with just my primary care doctor. Yeah. She ran a few tests. Um, she ran like a blood, you know, celiac panel, which came back negative. She ran a few more tests and basically said, you have IBS, let's try this medication, you know, yeah. um, and that didn't help. So then I ended up going to see a GI doctor who basically just wrote me off, like didn't yeah. basically without coming out and saying it basically said it's all in your head. Um, but then I went and saw someone who did prescribe me Rifaximin. And I did not see any improvement with that. Oh, wow. Yeah, nothing. And um, then I found a GI doctor that has a functional medicine background. So he was a lot more helpful. Um, but even with him, um, like he put me on a few different supplements and stuff and a different antibiotic. He actually gave me, it was so strange, he gave me um, azithromycin, which is z -Pak. Yeah. And... Um, I don't know, like, I guess he thought that antibiotic might work better. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. so I did that. Um, and still just not finding any answers. It wasn't until um, I found like a truly like functional medicine practitioner um, yeah. that I started doing specifically functional medicine testing that helped uncover some stuff. Um, I mean, I spent a week at the Mayo Clinic. Okay. And came back with nothing, you know, yeah. um, I had really one, frustrating. Yeah. it was really frustrating. I had one doctor, the GI doctor actually there said he did recommend a low FODMAP diet, which I had already tried. Um, mm -hmm. and he said, well, you may just need to rotate antibiotics like long-term. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, that's just not an option. <laughs> like, yeah. Not yeah, that. yeah. It's <laughs> like at that point, it's, it's like, if there's anything else you can do, right? Like I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, no thanks. But, um, so, so really, um, starting to work with a functional medicine practitioner and actually doing a SIBO test. Like I had not done an actual breath test for, you know, up to that point. Yeah. And, um, it did come back positive. I've done, a, you know, I've done rifaximin, I've done rifaximin and neomycin. Yeah. Um, I've done a lot of herbal protocols. Mm -hmm. Um, and the one that I guess I could say, um, helped me the most was the um, I think Alimed with um, oregano and neem. Okay. I did that one just on my own because yeah. after all of my reading and research and everything, I just was like, I'm going to try that. And yeah. that, that helped me that, that helped me a little bit. But for me, I don't know, like, I feel like that my issue may not be a small intestinal issue. Yeah. Maybe it is, but I don't think it is because every like SIBO treatment I've tried has not really done much for me to be yeah. perfectly honest. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, and it was interesting. I was listening to the SIBO symposium. No, I've been to the SIBO symposium, but the online, the SIBO SOS summit. Yes. Yeah. Most recently, Dr. Nerala Jacoby mm -hmm. spoke on um, that group of people that have been diagnosed with SIBO, but they, um, tend towards constipation and they tend to have high methane at baseline. Yeah. 
um, may not actually be SIBO. It may yeah. be more of a large intestinal issue. And yeah. I really feel like I fall more into that category. Um, so that was really interesting for me to hear. Yeah. Um, because and that's, that's really interesting just because I think that's an important point for a lot of people to, to note is that, um, you know, this is really complex and we still don't know a lot about it. So it could, you know, the microbiome, right? Like we don't, we're just like at the, at the forefront of discovering what's mm -hmm. actually going on in our bodies. So I think it's a really good point because we still don't know exactly what everyone's, you know, gut mm -hmm. is like. So exactly. it could be the case that some people have just a dysbiosis, right? And either the large intestine or, you know, it could be some other issue. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I really feel like, um, you know, over the past few years working with um, my current naturopath, who I really love, and she actually has a specialty in functional neurology. So she's really big on like the gut brain connection. And yeah. I definitely think there's a huge role there, you know, yeah. where things may not be firing in mm -hmm. the gut because there's some disconnect um, between the gut and the brain. And there's, you know, a lot of research being done with the vagal nerve and is that firing the way it needs to. Yeah. And so that's really in terms of where, um, where I found the biggest improvement is really focusing more on that gut brain connection. Interesting. Yeah. So I guess my question is like, I mean, how, what have you done that's kind of helped that connection, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. So, um, so for me, and I don't know, not everyone's going to be on board with this. Yeah. Coffee enemas, okay. Coffee yeah. enemas are great and they can really help restart that nerve functioning yeah. in the gut. Um, I find those to be, not only are they incredibly detoxifying, so they're very yeah. supportive to liver function, but they really help with like rebooting, um, the peristalsis yeah. in your large intestine. And so that is one thing that I found to be very, very helpful for me. Yeah. Um, also still doing some, you know, um, natural antimicrobials mm -hmm. just periodically um yeah. maybe not even you know i don't know i i tend to do them when i feel like i i need it like yeah. it, if i'm having a flare or anything like that then i'll do it and i find for me personally essential oils so yeah. essential oils have been very very supportive for me in terms of specific digestive blends and just the um antimicrobial oils that i can take in a capsule to yeah. really help um you know flush anything out that I need to. And so those, those two have been helpful. Um, and then other supplements, like making sure I'm getting, um, you know, a good whole food multivitamin and fish oil, mm -hmm. um, to really give my body the nutrients it needs and digestive enzymes. Um, yeah. I take with my meals. So that really helps as well with digestive function. Um, in terms of supplements, those are the big things. Magnesium as well. I find for me, magnesium and aloe. Um, cool, cool. Really, really helpful. And then have you, have you ever tried like um, any type of body work? I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of doctors mm -hmm. I've heard have suggested like either acupuncture or, yep. or, you know, visceral manipulation or something like that. Yes. Yes. I love acupuncture. Okay. I do that um, pretty regularly. In fact, um, last month I did like one session a week just to try to like, you know, kind of boost things. Yeah. Um, but I do it usually like once a month, um, once okay. or twice a month. I love acupuncture for that, for both the stress and anxiety piece, but also for like gut function, nerve function. All yeah. of that. So I love acupuncture. I love, um, infrared saunas yeah um, I actually have an infrared sauna so oh, awesome um, I love it and yeah. it is it's fantastic um, and then yeah you know and I know uh, you know you you value this piece too but just um, the mental and emotional component of it all the stress management the self-care yeah so meditation um, deep breathing because you have to allow your body to be in that rest and digest state as much as possible. Yeah. And um, I know you've mentioned, but I too am very much a type A personality. I'm go, go, go. Like I yeah. work a lot and yeah. I get stressed out. And so I don't need to let my body be in that fight or flight 
too much and it's easy for me to get there, you know, um, like sometimes I don't even realize it. And so to allow myself that time to get back into that rest and digest state and deep breathing is one of the best things you can do to just really like bring your body back in to that state. Um, eating slowly, like eating slowly, chewing your food slowly, like all of these things can play a huge role in just overall digestion. Definitely. And I think your story, you know, is, is really important for a lot of people to hear just because, you know, um, you know, at the core of SIBO or any, any gut issue, the, most of the research has shown that it's a lot of it is motility, right? Like mm-hmm. the function of our digestive tract for some reason or another is not working correctly. So, you know, doing things like you do, like trying different things, like it, whether it's acupuncture or coffee enemas, I actually personally have one of my doctors um, actually recommended to do um, I don't know why I'm blanking right now, but, uh, colonics, oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and I actually did a few of those and they did help me. Um, mm-hmm. but I found personally that they, they don't like, cause I have more of a bacterial issue, I think in the small intestines. So mm-hmm. they help my, my colon, but they don't help that issue as much. But yeah. for a lot of people, they can be really helpful. Like, you know, like it is for you, like enemas. Um, yeah. so I think just keeping in mind that, doing things to get the function of your digestive tract working better. Um, that's really important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I have another question. A lot of people, um, are curious about exercise, right? Like they get told by doctors that, you know, they should exercise or, um, you know, move their body. Right. But in some people it's, it's difficult because maybe they're fatigued or, you know, maybe their body, you know, it just isn't energized like it, like it was before. So what have you found with exercise? You personally exercise? Mm -hmm. I do. And, um, I have been in, you know, a place where I was extremely fatigued and, you know, at that point in time, my exercise was like, walking around my neighborhood. For sure. That was yeah. it, you know? Um, but I think getting movement is very important, but don't overdo it. Like listen to your body and do what you can do at that point. Now where yeah. I'm at, I'm in a much better place and I have a good amount of energy every day, you know? And, um, and so I do exercise and it's, it's different all the time. Right now I'm actually working, um, with a personal trainer and really focusing more on muscle building. So Mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, weight training, and then we'll do like high intensity interval, like very short, you know, burst of some hit training and things like that. But, um, I don't do it every day. And I have always been a fan of just long walks in nature. I think that is incredibly therapeutic. You know, if you can get outside, get some vitamin D, be in nature, and just go on like a relaxing walk. I think that is doing so much good for your body. Um, And I consider that exercise. So it really depends where you're at. For most people um, who are dealing with any type of chronic health condition, um, I would say don't do too much cardio. You know, Um, it is stressful on your body. And if you're dealing with some sort of chronic condition, then your body is already under stress. You don't want to add a lot to it. I've actually found that personally myself. Like, you know, I can't like running like long distance for me is like a no go still. Like I do like swimming is helpful and you know, other short or like walking, right? Like you said. Um, Yeah. So um, I kind of want to just dive a little bit into diet now. What's Mm -hmm. your experience? Um, Let's say when your symptoms were more severe and like now, what does your diet kind of look like? compared? Yeah. So, um, I've done all different types of elimination diets and I mean, I've tried SCD, I've done low FODMAP, I've done the SIBO specific protocol. I've done autoimmune protocol. Um, I've tried them all. (laughs) So, um, and to be honest, I mean, they may have helped for a short duration. Um, I do remember doing, it was, I think it was pretty much like an autoimmune protocol. Um, yeah. And I did that for 30 days. And I do feel like that helped me at that point in time where I was at. Um, it, it helped me. It definitely yeah. reduced some of my symptoms. 
Um, and I was able to add in, add back in a lot of the stuff like eggs and nuts and, you know, coffee and all that good stuff. Um, at this point where I'm at, like my goal and my goal with my, with my clients is to get them to the most diverse diet that makes them feel good because yeah. I don't think being restrictive for a long period of time is healthy. You're depriving yourself of a lot of key nutrients that you need. And if you're having digestive issues, you're probably not digesting all of your nutrients already. So trying to live on four or five foods is not okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so we need to get you in a place where you can enjoy more foods, um, you know, while still, you know, feeling good. And so, um, at this point where I'm at, I do maintain a gluten-free diet, um, lactose-free as well. I don't eat a lot of cheese. Um, I will have it occasionally, but I do eat butter. I'm a big yeah. fan of grass-fed butter. Yeah. Um, and, um, <laughs> and so that's really the extent of what I do. I try to keep it as clean as I can, um, but I enjoy going out to eat. I enjoy socializing with my friends. I think that's a big piece of healing is, yeah. is being around people. And mm -hmm. so being able to do that while not, um, you know, compromising the other things that you're doing as part of your healing protocol. Yeah, definitely. And I agree. Cause like when you come from, let's say your symptoms are severe, you get, you do get kind of isolated. Right. And like yeah. just being able to get out of that and like, let's say go out and eat or go hang out with friends and like have, you know, some food at a restaurant or something that's, that can be really a really good part of the healing process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, other thing is kind of just tell me about a little more about your journey from, you know, you worked in the pharmaceutical industry and then um, you kind of got back into alternative functional medicine. So like, you know, what kind of, tell me about that thought process and, you know, how that was basically. Yeah. So that's a really good question because it was a process. So when I left pharma, and really started diving into natural health and functional medicine and integrative health, I kind of went to the extreme where I was like, drugs are evil. Like, yeah. I can't believe I used to sell that, you know, like that, that sort of place where I'm like, and I, and I've done that with food too, where like gluten is evil and dairy yeah. is evil, you know, like you kind of go to that extreme. Everyone does. And, it. Yeah. yeah. I think we all do. And I've come back, <laughs> you know, yeah. So, yeah. I feel like I'm in a very middle ground place with yeah. all of it. Like yeah. you have to find what works for you. I consider myself to be more of like an integrative coach where I think um, natural approaches and pharmaceutical approaches, they both have their place. Yeah. You know, I don't think um, we need to be abusing pharmaceuticals and I know that happens, but mm -hmm. there is a time and a place for them when they're used appropriately, they can be helpful. And so I'm very much at that middle ground where I think combining the two and, um, you know, taking more of that integrative approach can be, can be very, very helpful. Yeah. And that's really cool because honestly, the, the one doctor who has been probably the most helpful for me, I've seen a, a few different doctors who have been helpful. She actually uses like an integrative approach and she combines, you know, pharmaceuticals with, you know, herbal tea and herbal tinctures and, and recommending things like colonics and stuff like that. So she, I would say for sure, she has been the most impactful and the most helpful in my journey. So that's really cool that you can that's do awesome. that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. So last question I kind of like to ask people is, you know, what advice do you give someone who's, let's say, maybe really struggling? They're at a point where their digestive symptoms are just kind of, you know, really taking control of their life. I mean, what would you tell that person? Yeah. So for anyone that is at that place, my first thing is seek help. Yeah. Um, and even find a team of practitioners, because I think you really have to take a holistic approach and that team could look like a doctor, a nutritionist or a health coach, mm -hmm. um, a counselor. I mean, I have done counseling and, um, you know, other forms of therapy that have been very helpful. Um, I think you really have to take a mind body approach to healing. Um, do things, do things in your life that are going to 
encourage you, uplift you, give you hope. Whether that's spending time with friends and family or having, for me, like I start my morning every morning with a, with a quiet time. Like yeah. I read my Bible, I do my Bible study. Yeah. It, maybe it's journaling, maybe it's meditation. Um, whatever that is for you to just never lose that um, positivity in your life and that, that hope in your life. And yeah. just knowing that your body is amazing. It has the capacity to heal. So don't give up. But um, those are those are a few things I would encourage is, you know, seek help and find those practitioners that really resonate with you that you feel you have a connection with. Yeah. And that's that's a really inspiring message. And, you know, it is important to remember, right, there is hope and like, you know, your body can get better. I think that's important for people to realize is that, you know, it may take may take you a little bit of time and may tell may take searching and seeking to find doctors who actually care about you. But, you know hang in there, right? Because you can get better for sure. There's a lot of people who have gotten to the point where, you know, they can go hang out with friends again and eat a lot of food and at different types of foods and whatnot. So absolutely. And then, um, so lastly, tell us a little bit about, you know, your kind of your health coaching practice and then, um, where people can find you to reach out and maybe get yeah. help. Yeah, absolutely. So my website is my name, jenbroils.com. And yeah, I have a blog. So I write, I write tons of different articles on there. Um, SIBO related articles, you know, essential oil related articles, mindset related articles. So there's all kinds of great free resources on there. I've got some free eBooks that you can download if you go to my website as well. Um, I do offer uh, one on one help coaching. And so if that's something you're interested in, just go to my website and reach out and contact me. Um, I've worked with a lot of clients and, um, you know, I, I, you know, I love being able to help people however I can. Um, so yeah, definitely check out my website. Yeah. And it's, I've seen, it's, it's a gorgeous website. So you guys definitely need to check it out. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this was a blast and, um, thanks so much for joining me today, Jen. Uh, I think this, this talk can really kind of help a lot of people. So I'm really glad that you were able to chat. Well, thank you so much, Josh. It is my pleasure. I've really enjoyed our conversation. Awesome. Bye. Bye.